Good morning. We're excited to introduce you to Chrysalis, AeroVironment's next generation ground control solution. Today you'll hear from company executives and key members of the development team on the strategic importance and the vision behind Chrysalis. You'll also learn about its advanced suite of powerful command and control capabilities and how it's adaptive to multiple mission scenarios that will improve operators' situational awareness and mission effectiveness. You'll also hear from a former UAS end user on how Chrysalis will revolutionize the way they train, plan and execute missions, providing the actual intelligence they need to proceed with certainty in today's ever-changing and complex operational environments. Following today's presentation, there will be a Q&A session. To submit questions, please enter them into the comments box located to the right of the viewing screen. And with that, please join me in welcoming Waheed Nawabi, AeroVironment's President and Chief Executive Officer. Good morning, Waheed. Good morning. Great to be with you, Blair. Thanks for joining us. Could you go ahead and just tell us, you know, why is AeroVironment uniquely positioned to develop Chrysalis? So AeroVironment has decades of experience in innovating and developing systems such as unmanned aircraft systems, unmanned ground vehicles, tactical missile systems, and pseudo, uh, high altitude pseudo satellites. Mm -hmm. Throughout our 50 year history, we have brought incredible innovations to the market, such as the uh, human-powered flight, mm -hmm. uh, the stratospheric solar airplane designs and aircraft and aerospace industry, and things such as the Hummingbird, Nano Hummingbird, and then the latest one is, of course, the Mars Ingenuity helicopter. Yes. And we're also now investing in AI and artificial intelligence, machine learning, and computer vision technologies. So in a nutshell, our customers expect us to solve their most important problems mm -hmm. so they can proceed with certainty. So how does Chrysalis fit into AeroVironment's whole future state strategy? So Blair, think of it this way. In the, today's battlefield, which is very complex and our adversaries are very capable, the warfighter is faced with lots of different complex systems and assets such as UAVs, UGVs, ground robots, air robots, et cetera, et cetera. Chrysalis is the window to all of those systems. Okay. What it does, it simplifies the interface and the interaction between the warfighter and all these different assets that they have. With our comprehensive portfolio of intelligent multi-domain multi robotic systems, the warfighter is able to actually simplify its user experience and interface with all these systems. So critical is, as Chrysalis is critical to that interface and that window to those assets. And when you look at Chrysalis, you know, why do you consider it a next generation ground control solution? So again, as I said, today's battlefield is extremely complex and our adversaries are very capable. And having the ability for ground robots, UAVs, and other types of assets that the warfighter has in its, its possession mm -hmm. to be able to operate all these things with very little cognitive load on the operator. So they can focus on the more mission critical aspects of their mission and their battlefield so they can win is really, really important. So what Chrysalis does, it allows them to, in a very scalable manner, in a very simplified manner, mm -hmm. to integrate all these things and integrate them together and make them interoperable so the operator, the warfighter, yes. can win against the adversaries. That's what Chrysalis really does at its core. What are the overarching values that Chrysalis provides to AeroVironment's customers? So again, as I said, today's battlefield is extremely complex and we have lots of different intelligent robotic systems. The ability to integrate them all together and fuse them so the user can have actually a very simplified way to integrate, interface with them and operate them, to actually have an edge in the battlefield against adversaries and our competition is vital. And what Chrysalis does in a very scalable, adaptable way, integrates all these things and it makes it simpler for the warfighter to be able to operate these systems. Mm -hmm. That whole enhanced situational awareness. That's right. So from your perspective, how would you summarize the value of Chrysalis? Again, an adaptable, integrated, interoperable, simple, scalable, modular solution is at the core of the design of Chrysalis. An air environment solution delivers that to the warfighter so they can proceed with certainty. Very nice. Waheed, thank you very much for your, your comments today and thank looking you. forward to seeing you back uh, in the Q&A. Thank you. Now let's dive deeper into the vision and the technology behind Chrysalis. Please welcome to the stage AeroVironment's chief software engineer and the architect behind Chrysalis, Mark Grable. 
Mark? Good morning, Blair. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Step in for me just, just a little bit. I want to go ahead and just jump right in. What first inspired Chrysalis? Well, Blair, this was uh, about six and a half years ago. We found ourselves in a situation where we had to develop both a Windows-based GCS and an Android-based GCS mm -hmm. simultaneously. And prior to that, we'd just been developing point solutions, mostly on Windows. So what we decided to do was start a new journey and create a modular software cross-platform library, if you will, mm -hmm. and proceed forward from that. So the first generation of that was our Quantix agricultural product, and that was an Android tablet-based solution um, that, that uh, we put together and was very successful and re well received by the customer. The second generation is what we call Ares, which is a Windows tablet-based version that runs all of our missiles, mm -hmm. our tactical missile systems. So Chrysalis is really the third generation of that, and Chrysalis, unlike the others, is being released in both an Android and a Windows version, as well as very quickly following on with a Linux version. Okay. Um, what problems do you aim to, to solve with Chrysalis? So there's two, principally. Um, the first is that we needed a real lightweight, portable uh, solution for our legacy, to replace our legacy GCS. And um, Chrysalis does all of that. It has a very intuitive interface, which reduces cognitive load. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, what I think is actually more important yes. is we have an interoperability connection with Chrysalis. And that's what allows uh, larger control systems, such as in a command center, to interoperate with Chrysalis as if they were a user, but strictly programmatically. Got it. So let's think about the, the backbone for just a moment. Uh, tell us about the development process. Well, we started with trade studies um, on tactile uh, devices, actual devices themselves, the end user devices, mm -hmm. and um, ergonomics and so on internally. And then we, when we thought we had a decent idea of what we wanted to do and what we wanted to accomplish, we went to our clients, our end users, mm -hmm. down, downfield that had been in, you know, in combat, and said, this is what we're thinking about doing. Does this make sense to you? Okay. So taking into account the voice of the end user, can you expand more on how you integrated the end user into the development process? Well, we started with obviously 10 years of feedback on our, on our legacy GCS, or more than that. And um, the, the primary thing that we were looking for and we understood is that uh, we wanted to get away from having a dedicated hardware solution and instead have a very flexible, modular software solution so that we could integrate into just about any system that we needed to integrate into. So the, the focus obviously is on cross-platform development. Yes. Um, win Windows, Android, Linux, uh, all being simultaneously supported. And we can run on a very minimal configuration, which is you know, a, a pocket DDL radio and a phone, mm -hmm. or to a much larger operation where we have more elaborate antennas and so on. Okay. Was weight ever in that conversation? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we know from, from downfield uh, feedback that weight is about how much ammo you can't pack. Okay. So. Can you also explain just a little bit, because I, I know that uh, Chrysalis, a lot of it is, has automated functionality, so, which is designed to reduce that, that cognitive load on the warfighter. Uh, tell us just a bit more about that. Well, we started actually with Quantix, Blair, okay. but we took a page out of that for Chrysalis and we introduced wizards. Mm. Um, and so the, the idea behind a wizard is that whereas in the past you might have had to know exactly what to do, the exact steps, yes. the wizard actually takes that burden off of you. And so it, you go through step by step, the wizard tells you the next thing that you need to do. We do that for mission planning, we do it for pre-flight operations, and we do it for all of our diagnostics uh, uh, support. So that wizard guides you to kind of take that whole stress of, you know, that cognitive load we were talking about off of, off of the warfighter. Right. The idea is to make it simple. All right. And thinking about um, Chrysalis, how does it compare to Air Environment's legacy GCS? Well, our legacy GCS uh, is super reliable. And that was part of, part of what we needed to do with, with Chrysalis. 
But I think the most important aspect, the difference and where I would divide the line, is that our legacy GCS is sort of a dedicated hardware solution. And then Chrysalis is a very flexible and modular cross-platform software solution that can blend itself pretty much into any customer operating environment that it needs to be. Okay. And speaking of those, those, those different platforms, what are the biggest benefits of Chrysalis being able to run on multiple platforms? Number one, reduced training. So the idea is that you can learn Chrysalis on a phone, mm -hmm. um, but you, you know then how to work on a desktop or on a tablet. It's a, the, the user experience is virtually identical. It's the same. Okay. And um, this is, uh, as far as operating systems, you know, it was Android, and you also mentioned ATAC, I think, at some point in one of our conversations. Right, and, and so we have Android, Windows, and Linux supported. The, uh, the Net Warrior Warfighter, the dismounted soldier, typically uses an Android solution. ATAC is very popular. It stands for Advanced Technical Awareness Kit. Okay. And Chrysalis runs side by side with that. And so we're, we're able to run on the same device and provide that functionality to the ATAC user. All right. And also, um, give us a little bit more detail about the enabling technology of Chrysalis. Okay. Um, First of all, it's an open architecture. Uh, we started in the beginning recognizing that we needed to, quote, play nicely with others, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the important part of that in Chrysalis, the first, the first most is what we call the remote connection manager. And that's where the interfaces for industry standard connections from larger control systems mm -hmm. occur. And the way to, best way to think about it, Blair, is anything that you can do interactively with Chrysalis, you can also do programmatically through that remote connection interface. All right. And from the aspect of command control, you know, what's the usefulness for command and control from your perspective? Well, the main thing is interoperability. So what we're, we're looking for is we have a growth mechanism with Chrysalis then so that through the Remote Connection Manager, we'll be adding industry standard interfaces like Stanag 4586, mm -hmm. um, the a, uh, cursor on target uh, standard, which is you know he extensively used in the ATAC network, and so on. And the idea is that that's their window, as Wahid was describing, yes. into our operation. And it's the same from vehicle to vehicle. Correct. All right. Well, Mark. Thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, joining us today, and we'll see you for the Q&A. Right. Thank you. My pleasure. Now let's take a look at Chrysalis in action.
Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me on stage is the GCS product line manager for Air Environment, Robert Sutton. Robert, come on in. Robert, I want to go ahead and jump right into everything. Next one. In a nutshell, what is Chrysalis? Chrysalis is ground control simplified. It's Aero Environment's uh, next generation ground control solution for our uh, family of systems of Raven, Puma, Wasp uh, through an intuitive user, uh, user experience mm -hmm. uh, in a wide variety of use cases. And um, we do this by utilizing various different configuration options of software, hardware, and antenna, uh, basically with the end goal to maximize battlefield uh, collaboration. Okay, so basically streamline that communication between end user, mobile unit, command center? Absolutely. All right. So as you mentioned, one of the key advantages of Chrysalis is that it can be uh, adapted for different case uses or different use cases. Anyone on the team can see what's happening in real time, anyone on the mission. Can you kind of explain a little bit more about that kind of flexibility? Uh, sure. Um, it's about uh, multiple users uh, connected to a single UAS. And uh, whether they're getting real-time uh, situational awareness um, or they're flying the UAV, and at the end of the day, these various different team members on that mission are trying to coordinate tactical operations. Um, so what we do is we have a system that's adaptive, it's modular, it's flexible. And for instance, if you were a battlefield commander at various different echelons, uh, you want to be coordinating with your team, who could be a forward observer, certainly the person that's flying the UAV. Um, or strike teams or QRFs, all, all connected together accomplishing that mission. All right. Um, something that as you develop Chrysalis, you had in mind four design pillars, you know, aspects that you wanted to make sure were embodied in Chrysalis. Um, tell us about those. Uh, yeah, really, uh, we had four different uh, themes that emerged from talking to our, our customers. Uh, number one is the intuitive user uh, interface. Um, that basically allows the situational awareness. It allows the user to concentrate on his mission mm -hmm. uh, to reduce his cognitive uh, burden. Um, Number two would be that it's modular and adaptive, uh, multiple missions and capabilities from a single solution. Number three would be a standardized user experience. Uh, we have a family of systems, and again, what that does is that reduces the amount of training between these different systems, and it increases that retention. And finally, number four uh, would be a, that it's uh, interoperability, and that we have um, a, a software system that's integrated into third-party battlefield management applications. Okay. So speaking of that aspect, uh, tell us more about Chrysalis Modular and Adaptive Capability. Sure. Uh, it's about uh, uh, different mission parameters. Uh, there are various different participants, as I was saying, around the battlefield. They're all trying to accomplish the same mission, but they need to collaborate and coordinate. Uh, so. Crystalis GCS is able to be tailored to the various different team members depending on what their job is on that battlefield. Um, so we do that with a plug and play type of uh, scenario. And at the end of the day, uh, the customers, they need the flexibility, they need choices, uh, and they need to be able to adapt to how they're using it with themselves as well as the rest of their team. Okay. So we have four different configurations of Crystalis here on stage. Um, just start to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, sure. Uh, so I mentioned before that uh, we have a software, hardware, and antenna. And the four different configurations are Chrysalis RVT, mm -hmm. Chrysalis Ultralight, Tactical, and Command. Okay. And where it starts is it starts at the application. Uh, on the application, it's Android and Windows and Linux uh, compatible. Um, then it's talking about control. You have on-screen control capabilities, or we have a, a Chrysalis controller, which we'll show in a sec. Okay. Um, these all combine with standardized hardware and NetWarrior compatible cabling, batteries, and, and various different accessories. And again, all on a plug and play basis so they can pick and choose. All right. And finally, with the antenna, we have choices of either the pocket DDL or the standard RF antenna. Okay, so same core requirements or elements, and one of the first things is the Chrysalis RVT. Correct. So. Uh, Let's start with this. Tell us a bit more. Sure. Uh, as simple as form, this, uh, this is an example of Chrysalis RVT. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it's an example of a single operator that's wearable. Um, again, this person is receiving the passive downlink, uh, so has that situational awareness. He sees what the aircraft is showing. Um, and with the uh, pocket DDL here, it's a five kilometer range mm -hmm. in, in a form factor that's about seven ounces. Okay. Um, 
and that's, that's, that would be the RVT. All right, and, and what's the range on, on this configuration? This would be five kilometers range. Five kilometers, okay. Correct. And next we would have the Chrysalis Ultralight. That's correct. correct. Okay, let's move on to that. And that would be this, correct? Yes, so, so with the Chrysalis Ultralight configuration is, is the uh, lowest level configuration you can have full command and control experience. It starts with the application. Uh, the application is loaded onto the, the device for mm -hmm. full uh, command and control and mission planning. Uh, the device is then removed from this uh, case and placed into our chrysalis controller um, so that they have the full command and control experience on the app and as well as the uh, joystick and physical control. Again, in a wearable situation with, with the pocket DDL mm -hmm. in five kilometers of range. So, so what's the total weight? Uh, total weight's about three and a half to four pounds, as you see here. Okay. With the single battery. Yeah, the single battery. Yeah. All right. And let's take a look at Chrysalis Tactical. Sure. So let's see. We're bringing in. Yes. With Chrysalis Tactical, what you add is you need to have uh, the ability to have extended operations for a longer period of time. Yes. So we had a single battery here. What we add is we add a battery splitter which simply is the ability to do hot swapping, which means you can uh, mix and match them on the fly so you can continue to do your operations un uninterrupted. So no down interruption. No, no okay. downtime. So in this configuration, again, you have two different batteries with the battery splitter, the chrysalis controller, and, and, the, and the pocket DDL. Plus, we have the ability with only one additional cable here attaching to the same, on a plug and play basis, okay. attaching to the same hardware that goes over to the standard antenna, and that will increase the range up to 20 kilometers. Okay, so from five up to 20 kilometers. Right, okay. and then either or, you have a choice. Okay, um, let's also take a look at Chris's command. Sure. Thank you. And this is all about mission operations, you know, running, you know, running from Battlefield Command Center. So That's the Chris's correct. command, GCS. Okay, with the Chrysalis Command GCS, let me just hook this up real quick. So with the Chrysalis Command GCS, it's ideal for a command center uh, at, at various different echelons, be it a semi-fixed or fixed position. And what we have here is a ruggedized um, laptop, and this is Windows and Chrysalis app, full control app is loaded on, on the laptop. Um, so that allows the battlefield commander to have that situational awareness. The other element that's hooked in is the Chrysalis controller. And the difference here is if you notice, uh, there's a blank cover that's mm -hmm. here. So the phone is removed. However, it's the same command and control interface on a physical joystick as they have with the other configurations using the screen and then the same uh, controls they have here uh, on the joystick. Okay. You know, this makes me think about, you know, all my days of growing up, this is like a video game controller. Exactly, and that, that was one of our inspirations too. So we want to go from the familiar experience, life experiences. Um, so they have joysticks, bumpers, trigger, D buttons, and auxiliary buttons um, that you can interface with the system. I just thought about something. So on some of the, the other configurations, we had a screen which we could work, and we also have the, the joysticks. That, 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 interchangeable? That, that they're inter fully interchangeable. You can do on-screen commands as well as physical commands, and we have a way to interject the command and control with mm -hmm. the joysticks for uh, either wet or dirty uh, type of screens and things of that nature to mitigate that. All right, very good. And, you know, thinking about all this, how does, you know, this kind of modularity and adaptability, how does it benefit the end user? Well, we here at AeroVironment, we believe that the user's experience uh, conducting these complex, uh, high-value missions, it really should be as simple uh, and as intuitive as uh, people have come to uh, have in their, their everyday life in mm -hmm. terms of uh, t using technology. Okay. And when we think about technology at the end of the day, that's what helps us, you know, stay connected to others. Yeah. It, uh, successful missions are about uh, connecting people. Uh, in real time, uh, in ways that are uh, uh, simple, intuitive, natural, and easy. And uh, Chrysalis GCS is adaptable. It's full functions, command and control, which enables uh, maximize uh, communications, collaborations, and really that human-centric connection like never before. And as an example, again, from the battlefield commander, uh, we have 
th them being able to see what's going on in the field. Yes. You have the people in the field that are all coordinating those missions so to achieve that, that, that success. So with all the different configurations, we've got the end user, we've got the mobile units, we've got the fixed you know, command control. Absolutely. Very good. So in short, it's ground control simplified. Correct. Awesome. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your insights, and I'll see you at the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As we prepare for our next speaker, let's take a look at AeroVironment's future state strategy. To share with us his perspective of the warfighter on the ground, please welcome one of AeroVironment's flight test engineers, Hunter Williams. Hunter, come on out. Blair, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks you know, for having come me. Come in just a little bit closer to make sure everybody can see the monitor. You know, Hunter, you're a former Marine. Yes. And I know you have extensive flying you know, of, the, of UAS. Uh, before coming to AeroVironment, can you tell us you know, a bit more about your background? Yeah. So like you said, I was a former Marine. Um, I was a sergeant in for about seven and a half years with uh, England Co. Um, I flew Raven and Puma in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. And um, after I got out, I decided to join Air Environment as an uh, engineering flight test specialist. And I'm also one of the main uh, product testers of Chrysalis. All right. You know, you brought some pictures with you today. Let's, let's take a look at those. You know, it's from your time in the field. Can you tell us just a, a little bit more about these things? Because I know you operate in some harsh environments as you're out there. Yeah, as you can see, uh, a lot of these were desert environments, you know, rough. Uh, grainy, sandy environments. Um, so the importance of having a strong product um, that can sustain, you know, what we put it through is very important. Mm -hmm. And this particular picture that's up now, you know, that one's particularly interesting to me. Uh, can you tell us just a bit more about what's happening there? Yeah, so uh, in that picture, I was flying the Puma um, out of a operational post uh, mm -hmm. in Mosul, Iraq. Um, it's actually a mansion that used to belong to Saddam Hussein. Um, so that's why I took a picture, you know, it's something cool. Absolutely. You know, to have. Um, but as you can see, I'm actually holding the uh, old GCS, um, and that you know that was with me for a lot of my uh, missions. So, and that was the legacy GCS, correct? Yes, the legacy. So when we th go from the legacy GCS to Chrysalis, Chrysalis is you know low size weight, power profile, compact lightweight. How does that ultimately help the end user? Um, I mean, it helps us a lot. You know, every every ounce counts. Um, and, you know, I've carried a lot of weight. You know, anybody who's been downrange has carried a lot of weight. So the smaller, more slick that we can get, um, the better. You know, especially for my lower back, you know, mm -hmm. it, you know, it helps a lot um, and every, everyone else's. And, you know, in the most dramatic situations, it can mean your life. Um, we're moving a lot yes. um, while we operate. So we need to be able to pick up and move. Um, and situations or situational awareness is a key factor that Chrysalis brings to the fight. Mm -hmm. um, so that's extremely, extremely important. Um, so when we're, when we're, so you're not having to make choices of, you know, you know, you know, leaving something behind or whatever with this, with having it lightweight. Yes. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to make that choice. It's, it's something that we can just plug in or plug out and just move. And in real world scenarios, I'm sure, you know, simplicity is important. You know, why is that important? Yes. It's ex extremely important. Um, there's only three components. There's the antenna, the batteries and the end user device. Um, so it's easy to just put on my chest mm -hmm. and just keep moving. Um, it's a quick assembly and a quick launch. And like I said, we're, we're constantly moving, our enemies moving, our assets are moving, so we need to be as maneuverable as possible. Okay. So speaking of maneuverability, you know, Chrysalis, it's mobile, it's wearable. Why is that important? Uh, because we need to, like I said earlier, we need to quickly extract. Yes. Um, we need a small footprint. 
which basically just means you know when we're moving from OP to OP or whatever we're doing, we don't want to leave too much behind or anything behind. I'm, I'm sorry. And um, situational awareness is again one of the most important things. So it's important when we're moving that we're still able to see, you know, our enemy, mm -hmm. um, our friendlies, um, it, you know, anything. And basically leave no trace to give anything to the enemy. Yes. All right. So thinking about your time, thinking about real world scenarios, how could Chrysalis have personally helped you in Iraq or Afghanistan? Um, the first thing would be carry less equipment. Um, like I said, you know, there's a lot of big decisions that we have to make um, when we're preparing for a mission and weight is one of the biggest ones. You know, only a human can only carry so much, so yes. that's very important. Um, accuracy of information, you know, so when we're, when we're uh, sending grids to higher echelons or to each other, mm -hmm. you know, it, every number count or matters, you know, if we mess up one number, that could be, you know, terrible. Um, and streamlined communication. So with the RVT uh, feature, everyone will be able to see the POV of the operator. So for example, if I am flying the Puma AE off of the Chrysalis yes. uh, and my teammate is five clicks away, he will be able to see exactly what I'm seeing, which would limit uh, our communication between each other, which is good. You know, we don't, we don't have to necessarily speak. Yes. And then if we're sending something to higher echelons, we can digitally send that as well. Um, and everything is just to limit the amount of time it takes in the kill chain. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is basically just the time that we identify a target to yes. the time we prosecute the target. So, so we want to make that as quick um, as possible. So that way, identify the target and share the information on everybody that's involved in the mission. Yes. We're good. Well, Hunter, thank you so much. Yeah, First thanks. of all, thank you for your service. And then, you know, thank you for all this real world, you know, knowledge and experience that you've shared with us today. Yes, thanks for having me, Blair. Thank you very, very much. much.